right, before we move forward with more examples in the product animation space, let's look at camera animation. And some, that's something that many artists neglect because they focus on modeling and lighting and texturing and all these things. And many camera movements are actually very static. If you really look at it, if you go to your favorite animation or favorite artist and look at his stuff, most of the time, many times, it's just very static camera movement. And it's perfectly fine with most of the shots, but sometimes you really need to come up with something sophisticated. I'm hearing that a lot from my clients, that they love my camera movement. And um, I was able to unlock that with a specific thing that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And sometimes, like when you watch these IBC presentations and these NAB presentations at the Maxon booth, every now and then you see an artist, like even seasoned artists using their custom rig with uh, Alliance of Spline and es Express, uh, Espresso, and, I was going to say Espresso, Espresso and everything. And I'm like, dude, that's not really necessary because it's built right into Cinema 4D. And that's something that really nobody uses. I never see anyone using this. And uh, what I'm talking about is this. The first thing that when I, when I saw this, I was like, yeah, just like you, <laughs> when you're looking at this right now, it's like, oh, this, this uh, tripod here and then this long arm. Okay, that makes sense. But what is this? The camera head and it's more angles and it's offset. It's not lined up with the arm. And I was thinking the same when I saw this the first time. I was looking at it once and never looked at it again for a while. And then when I saw these custom rigs from these other artists, I'm like, hey, hey, wait a minute. Shouldn't that be possible with the built-in camera crane? And it is. Now, what I want you to do is this. Go into the camera tag and you see, let's let's pop this, let's pop this out. Let's bring it in here. And you see all these pre-made values here. These actually are making um, are the reason why this camera crane looks like this. And it looks fancy, it looks like a real crane, but we don't need that. So what I want you to do is this, follow me with this here. Um, just zero out all the values and watch what happens. Cool, we got a camera. <laughs> okay, but that's not the whole thing. Um, then let's bring back the length again. Okay, so let's, let's put this back to 300. And now what I want you to do is as you've seen, it came with a null and the whole camera was actually parented to the null. Now go into the head value here and bring the parent crane into the head. Now, what happened is you created a full on rig that is incredibly powerful. I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second. So you might be thinking, okay, that's all fun and games, but do I really have to do all this every time I want to use this rig? Of course not. You can save out a preset just like, like I did. Click on the camera tag and now click here. And as you've seen, I, I saved out um, a preset already called my crane. So when you save the preset, give, give it a name and say, okay. And now it's being saved into the asset browser right under presets. It says my cool crane. Okay. You could drag it in from here or you could go ahead and um, click on this, uh, select the camera crane, and then from this drop down here, actually select your preset, and here it is. Now, what are we gonna do with this? Like, let me demonstrate how powerful this is. So I have a, I have an older project here, I, actually, um, I did this the other week, um, for a title animation. And in this specific case, I created this camera motion here, and I wanted to follow this film strip and fly along this, this film strip and follow it and create this shot here. And this was really, and I wanted to fly uh, through this arm and everything. And I really tried with align to spline and camera target and all these things. And those techniques work in, in, in other individual cases. But let me tell you, once you start using this, you're not going back because that actually unlocked a whole new world of tools for me of angles that I can actually create. I tried this particular shot with align to spline didn't work. The good thing about this setup is it's, it, it works really well when you modify multiple dimensions at the same time, like distance, um, banking, camera rotation, things along those lines, then you can create really smooth camera movements. Okay. And that was the case here. And let's, let's, uh, let's work on an example here. So I have this camera uh, set up here and let's bring in an object. I have this from the asset browser here. So you should be, you should be able to follow along um, when you look for 
award. That's the, this award statue right here. And now what are we gonna do with it? Now let's look through the camera, okay? And first thing, we have our center right at the bottom of this thing because I centered it, it to the world, to, to world space. So what we wanna do is actually wanna bring it up because we wanna focus on this upper body area here, maybe around the chest. Now, look at this. Let me pop up this, uh, pop out this attribute once again. And now let's create a, a camera movement. And what we wanna do is actually ignore this base height because it, it's limited to the ground floor. You can't go below the ground floor with this base height, okay? So it's, it's stopping here. So I actually leave this, usually leave this alone, but what I use is the, the head height, okay? And now you can already see when I start modifying this parameter, it's actually creating this smooth animation. And now what we wanna do, we wanna create an animation along this statue here, like to demonstrate how powerful this actually is. And you create these smooth animations only by modifying this one value here, okay? So we wanna start here and control click and set a keyframe and then move to frame 50 and then go all the way up something like this maybe and then another control click and we got this animation here okay so so far so good let's play this looking good and now um while we're here let's go to the banking and then maybe um also frame 50 up here we want it to actually line up but here we want to start with a um, slight rotation. I mean, a very significant rotation. And now you get the idea why this is so powerful because this is actually a way to get really powerful, interesting angles and still very smooth camera motions. And this would have been, probably would have been possible with align to spline. But if you ever like, especially in product animations where I have this hero object and, and pan around it, this, creating these things is really tedious when I come from this angle and then go down and then I would be thinking, okay, but at the same time, I want to have this arc movement around this um, dolly movement around this object, not this linear movement, how I'm going to do that. Okay, let's bring in a spline. You get the idea. It gets very complicated very quickly. Okay. So this camera setup, again, bring in um, the camera crane like this. And you got this weird looking, actually realistic looking, but unusable camera crane here. So what you want to do, you just want to zero out all these things and then still want to uh, have some length in the arm and then bring the camera crane into the head target and boom, you got your, you got your camera crane. And then from there again, you, you can do anything you want. Modify, let's pop this out again, modify the arm length like this or um, animate the banking, even the pitch. What these other values do, let me demonstrate that for a moment. Maybe we want to look at it from the outside so, so I can demonstrate what these values are doing. The heading, that's pretty self-explanatory. As I said, the base height, you want to leave that alone because you can't go below um, ground level from the camera crane perspective arm length self-explanatory the pitch will basically do the same thing as uh, the heading the head height does but from um, moving the whole arm and this thing here actually moves the head height from the head perspective from the head pivot and the heading you can actually correct the heading from here although even if the heading, the head target is set, that's great. If you have, like I did with some uh, here for my client Sennheiser with these microphone animations, when I want to keep, although I've set a target, I want to keep the hero object in, in frame all the time. You have to really adjust the heading, uh, the head heading. And <laughs> the, this is a good way to keep everything in frame, especially when you frame it for social, where you, you, you want to use the whole real estate. That's very handy. And the width, let's, uh, let's look from the outside again, is another way to actually rotate around this head pivot. Last but not least, let me zero this out once again. Last but not least, the pitch does the same thing and the banking is actually rolling the camera and um, the offset actually you can still come closer to the object 
uh, without actually modifying the arm length, which sounds counterintuitive, but it uh, also comes in handy sometimes. Okay, so um, this is an absolute fantastic way to create sophisticated camera movements. And really, let me repeat, once you use this, you're never gonna use anything else. I use it for 90% 90, 90 of all cases. I use this setup. I'm not doing anything else with my cameras anymore. Certainly not buying any custom um, presets from certain Patreons or, you know, that's not necessary. It's built in. It's not very obvious at first, but once you get a hang of it and save out this preset, it's it's pure gold okay like this statue here <laughs> okay so yeah thank you for watching i hope you learned something new and i try to provide really valuable information about my work my experience after all i'm a maxon certified cinema 4d pro and yeah um i hope you learned something if you did please consider uh, subscribing and hitting the like button that's going to help me out promote this channel and i'll see you in the next tutorial